Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Gaborum Podcast. And man, this this whole season is really exciting for me to share with you as we're going through the development process of Hold the Pass. And right now, we're about a week away from being in Salt Lake. And the guy I have with me, let me tell you what, I'm excited to do this podcast with the Justin Torrance. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's a massive part of this production and an actor that I saw um, the first time on a film that had a massive impact on my soul. So Justin, thanks for sitting in on this podcast with me and thanks for being a part of this project, bro. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, What's yeah. up, guys? Yeah, so man, this, this journey um, is something that the Lord, with the whole production, has, has put a strong calling on Cliff's heart with writing and my heart with seeing the impact of film on the masculine soul. Mm-hmm. And we're not excluding women, right? Like w- women love a great storytelling production. Um, as well as a good strong man. <laughs> as well as a good strong, <laughs> they love a good strong shamgar. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, women, women are attracted to that, but we're, we're really creating these stories to draw the masculine soul in. Yeah. And man, f- for you, I'll never forget the first time I saw you, right? Like, it was on the Heart of Man film, and I'm watching this film with a group of guys for the first time, and everything is is, is done excellent on the production scale. And I'm watching you, and guys, if you haven't seen the Heart of Man, watch it, watch it tonight, watch it this weekend. Next, it's so impactful, and, and here's a challenge for you. I want you to watch it maybe by yourself, and then invite three or four guys to watch it with you and watch the different experiences you'll have. But I watched this, Justin, and, and you you don't say one word in this production because you're doing the the action side of this, right? There's It's like a, a documentary. I don't know the right word. Yeah. But, it's a little uh, bit of a new genre. You know, you have this uh, docudramas, mm-hmm. but it's a little different than that because it's two different storylines kind of happening, but it echoes the same message. Yeah, so it's yeah. you have the all these different amazing Paul Young's testimony of how the shack came into being, yeah. right? And you have all these amazing, powerful testimonies, and you have you're you're actually telling a story of the prodigal son in that, and yeah. and it was so well done. It, and I'll never forget the point where you just you get called away, like you're you're following your temptation off, and you walk right off the cliff. Yeah. And I thought it was I thought it was CG. Like I was just thinking like there was a studio. You actually did it. I did. <laughs> I, mean, like, yeah. I, I talked Adrian was there with yeah, you. Yeah, Adrian was the stunt coordinator, Adrian Hein, who you I think you guys oh, spoke with yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. but you so 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 the film, guys, what I love about this whole film, The Heart of Man, is it's a it's a production that's excellent. So we're trying to withhold the pass. And it's impactful, right? You could tell there's yeah. prayer, you could tell there's the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit through that film. Yeah. And it has impacted, I mean, men around this, around the world through that production. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit. I want to get the glimpse first on, because I'm just fascinated. You walk off that cliff and it's not like, it's not cliff jumping. Like I've cliff jumped. Yeah. Everybody's cliff jumped. But you're, wa- you're, you're timing it. You're controlling your body. You're looking at the water. You didn't even look down. Yeah. Were you scared? Yeah. Yeah, I was super scared. <laughs> I was super scared. Yeah, you don't realize until you try to do a deadfall how much you move when you're doing cliff jumping. You move to balance your body so oh, you can yeah. land right. And you're looking and you're gauging and you're anticipating and you're controlling. Yeah. And when you're doing a, a walk-off without looking down and you're not moving your body at all, you're you know 50 feet down to the, the raging ocean and you're just praying that you land right because otherwise you could really yeah and luckily they had a you know a lifeguard out there and they'd swim the water so there's not rocks and stuff but you know the swell is coming in so you gotta time it with the swell so you get bashed against the rocks and losing light and all this stuff so you gotta go and yeah that's amazing yeah it was it was uh i was really glad when it was over with yeah (laughs) yeah i was glad i did it and i was glad that it was done so i was when i was uh 16 at lake powell in high school i we were cliff jumping and I jumped off a cliff and I didn't control my body like I should. Legs came up and cracked my sternum. 
So I watched that from perspective of, I was watching the water and I was, I cliff jumped all the time, yeah. but it was just a little miss. Yeah. Legs came up and popped it and yeah. it was, you know, that, yeah. that, that sucked. Yeah. <laughs> so I was yeah. watching you, it, like you just walk off this thing. Yeah. But one of the, so you've been an actor for a long time and one of the tips that you told me while we were just doing choreography, we're, mm -hmm. we're recording this in San Antonio and the final stunt choreography weekend before we go into filming. And you told me, like, you, you always have to have what motivates you driving your actions, driving the story. Yep. So in, in that part of the story, I, I don't want the whole thing to be about that, but I, just, I love that production. Like, I love it so good. What was driving you off of that cliff? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, a couple different points in the production, Eric Esau, the director, you know, this guy's being lured away by this tempestress. Yeah. You know, this uh, beautiful siren of sorts singing this song and just luring him away, you know. And um, and there were a couple different points where Eric, the director, you know, he's like, all right, now you see her. And now, now you're lusting after her. So lust after her, go. <laughs> and, and this one time I looked up, I'm like, I'm like, cut. I was like, sorry, Eric, can you get your wife to move out of my eye line, please? Oh. You know, and he was like, dude, I'm so sorry, bro. And, it, you know, so you're kind of like laughing and it's playful, right? But it's sure. also a, a serious thing, you know, so you're able to kind of have fun with it because, hey, look, the FedEx guy is here. Yeah, <laughs> if you guys hear any noises, anything it's like that. It's just FedEx. Yeah. <laughs> Probably another shipment of weapons. <laughs> um, you know, we had this big mission. You know, we're having fun. We're able to be lighthearted, but also it's, you know, it's somber because these yeah. big moments, you know. But I remember uh, approaching the cliff, and it ended up being a much higher cliff than what I was told it was going to be. There is, like, this normal spot. We filmed in Hawaii, and there's this south point, like the southernmost point of the United States, and people jump off that all the time. And it's probably 25 feet or maybe 30 feet. And then we get we get to set or rolling up and off road and I'm like what is our what are those people is that our crew down there I'm like yeah yeah you're gonna jump off that I'm like no nah, man the jumps over here well they wanted that walk off so we had to go to a much higher spot in order to actually be able to just step off where it was safe to fall Whoa. and not hit rocks and stuff instead of having to jump out you know so it ended up being pretty tall and I was kind of like I really want to do this I'm gonna live what the character is living right yeah I've been doing a little cool. bit of that you know getting oh, the yeah. hair and stuff going and you know, what would this person be like? And, you know, who are they? And, and so I wanted to experience as much of this character's experience as I could. Oh, that's and cool. I like doing stunts. So I'm, I don't necessarily like doing high falls into the ocean kind of stunts. Yeah, but in, just in general, I, level. it's a different thing, man. Um, so, yeah, you know, being up there, this song, Every Captive Free, um, I think some um, Matt Gilman okay. out of IHOP, I think. Cool. Kansas City yep. sings a song about every captive free and that but something that that mm. was kind of on my heart like every captive free we're doing this to see captives set free you know wow and um and I just kind of had this reminder when we were up there on the cliff edge like we're doing this to set captives free and then just kind of like all right lord I, I need you to help me and it really was this moment of getting lost what was my motivation and intention it kind of clicked yeah, from cool, like bro. the spiritual reminder from holy spirit encouraging me to like all right let's go in let's do work Wow. And approaching the cliff and feeling like I could see the temptress and I wanted it so bad and I just went. Yes. And was able to go. So right, it's it's in those moments of letting that story drive you that brings those performances to life, you know, where it's like you watch and you're like, That guy's he's staring at the horizon, what's he looking at? And you realize he's staring off at this this wow. luring temptress, you know. And That's it wasn't powerful. because I'm just like a baller stunt guy. It was because I was in the moment, you know, yeah. as an actor and being able to just stay with what I wanted, you know, and letting that lead me. Wow. And uh, it, I don't know how it would have off at all otherwise, so I was really glad it was really helpful. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, it just, you know, from my perspective watching that, I, I've been married for 13 and a half years. I love my wife like crazy. But I tell guys constantly, if, if your marriage revolves around your love for your wife, it's probably not going to be the healthiest, strongest marriage. Hmm. A marriage, every man needs to hear this and walk in this. If your marriage depends on your love for Jesus, it will sustain any storm. So like hmm. your, your top priority isn't how strongly you love your wife. It's how strongly do you love the Lord? Because you can't love the Lord with your whole heart and not obey his commands. Like you want hmm. to, you, you love him. It's good. But I love the Lord so much. But I, I literally feel like on any given day, I could just walk away from him yeah. because the temptations are so heavy yeah. around. And 
yoga pants are so attractive, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I love you so much, dad. By that night, sometimes I could be the prodigal son just taking my inheritance and walking away from him. Yeah. And I mean, my inheritance, right? But it's, it's that understanding when you did that and you looked off, it was like every guy watching that could see them in that to say, I yep. would be that stupid yep. to step off a cliff and not even look down by following the temptation of pornography, of the lust for women. And, yeah. and that was, that's what you're showing, right? That you're getting taken off that cliff away from God's presence in that to the temptress, yeah. to a woman, which yeah. was amazing, by the way. Um, guys, if you're listening to this and you're not watching this podcast and you hear the crackling, it's because we're sitting next to a fire. Um, so... Yeah. We, 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 so if you're wondering what the heck is going nice on, it's mm. nice and warm. Um, we have both earned our seat next to this fire this weekend. So, um, but I, I really love the moment. I had to clarify that for everybody listening. But I love that moment where you get there. You're still you're you're in character, and this is something with hold the pass. I have been honestly, sh I, I understand, but it's a hard thing to do for a Christian man. You have to, you showed what it would be like to chase your lust. And she turns around and you, you intensely kiss her. And I was so excited to see that, right? Because I'm, I got saved when I was 18. I got brought up on Dr. Dre and Eminem. And like, that's how I know how to treat a woman, right? So yeah. I go from that to Christian life and I see Christian films and productions. And it's yeah. like, they like peck on the forehead. Yeah. It's like, that's not how you kiss somebody. It's that not you're real life, lusting. man. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. real life. And when she, man, when you had that kiss, it was just, it, and then she just turned to worms or she, she yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. It was an amazing moment that impacted me because it was real life, yeah. right? Like it was real life. You finally get it and she decomposes right in yeah. your hands. Yeah, oh. it's, a, it's a lie. It doesn't satisfy the way that it promises that it will. Sex yep. is good. Women are good. Beauty is a thing. Yes. Being lured, being drawn to. It's all a thing. It's all part of God's great design. Yes. Praise God for you that. You guys, you have two kids? Two kids, yes. Man, if sex didn't feel good, there's no way you'd be having <laughs> no sex, way. man. Because you know what comes out of it? Some screaming, kids. pooping, money stealers. That's what comes <laughs> out of it. Money stealers that never It's got to feel good, man. It feels so good that you keep having kids even when you're growing out of your mind. That's how good it feels, you know? Yeah. And it's a design to it's keep, hum to keep yes. humans Amen. creating, that. you know? Um, but yeah, there, there is this, uh, John Eldridge talks about it, you know, this, um, this lie that a woman can satisfy that who she is and what she has is what I actually need. Yeah. And that's not what you need. Not what you that's need. not life was, yep. is what he says that we're, we're under the spell that that's life. And that's just not true. It's not true. And, uh, dang, that's good. That's so good. And that's exactly what's happening in the moment. He thinks that this is life and he realizes that it's not, that it's actually death, you know? And, uh, and it can oh. be, it can be hard sometimes. We have to re remember that. And, you know, just to, to kind of add on to that and a little bit of a, a jog to the side, but, you know, we can tell ourselves all day, every day, don't lust, don't look at that. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Don't do this. Sure. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Ah, 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 list, you know, list, make lists, what not to do and how to avoid this and that. But I mean, damn it. We fail at that, man. Yeah. You know, so we, true. Fail. we fail. So. And the, it's, yeah, the best uh -huh. motivation isn't what not to do. Yep. I, like I remember going, if you're driving down the road and there's like a risque billboard when you're a kid, parents <laughs> be like, you guys don't look to the left. I am looking to the left of me. Like, Why not? You know, <laughs> instead it's like, oh, look at this thing on the right. And you're like, I don't know. You don't even know that you missed that. Thing, yeah, right? it's good. And it's, there's this, and we talk about this inside of this heart of man family, uh, people that made this film that were really close is that there's a better yes. And that's yeah. what draws us. And I really believe that that's why God calls certain things sin yeah. is because it's not because this thing's necessarily evil. It's just because it's not the best thing I have for you. Yep. So I think the rebranding of what we understand sin to be, yeah, it's just, this is just not the best. Yep. And the Father loves us. He wants us to have the best. So he's always, dude, that's so good. instead of saying, why did you do that, dude? You shouldn't have done that. Don't do this. Yep. He's saying, let's not worry about what you shouldn't do right now. Yep. Let me tell you what I have for you. Yeah, that's good. Because you can, yeah. you can either inspire change, which means to stir somebody's heart toward a desire for yep. something different. That's good. Or you can tell them what they should have. They'd have no idea how to get there. Yeah. And it's this self-defeating cycle. Yeah. So you got to inspire. And the Lord does that by saying, look what I have for you. There's a better yes. There's something better. Yeah. And we man. can chase those lesser things, but we find out in the end. Yeah. 
it's a house of cards. It's nothing, you know. It doesn't yeah. satisfy. Oh man, and I love. And unless we remind each other of that, dude, that's yeah. where the. Is it the better yes? What's the better yes? You know. Yeah. And if you say, dude, I didn't pick the better yes, it's like, oh, that's all of us at times. Let me just remind you what it is. Yes. Or you remind yourself, dude, what do you actually want in life? Yep. What do you? What does your body crave? What does your yeah. soul crave? What dude. I crave is intimate connection. Yep. A lifelong relationship and, and intimacy that withstands through ups and downs. Yep. Well, you don't get that from, man, from these flusies. Yeah, from <laughs> these flusies. <laughs> so it's, it's it's that right? I, I'll never forget. I, I spoke at a youth conference, and I, I for the record, I hate speaking at youth conferences. Right? It's it's just. I, I love speaking to men and adults. Youth comp it's so hard because you empathetically like it's so hard because you know the hell they're walking in. It's the hardest to me because mm. a grown man can pursue a woman, hopefully, and you know, th there's an end somewhere close to the, the struggle with lust. Yeah. But I'll never forget I walked in, the first thing I said was married sex is to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. And it was like they were all like He said sex. He said sex. Yeah. And, and and I want them to know, like, it's so yeah. amazing. It's the best yes you can pick. It's the best yes. I still have never experienced that. I look forward to it yeah. <laughs> sometime in the near future. <laughs> yes. So don't rub it in too much, Cody. <laughs> Let's talk about that for another two minutes. No, huh? yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going. Okay, okay. I'm just going to hunker down. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, oh, no. That's so funny. So, but, but, but it's what I love about the, the Heart of Man film is you choose sin but the movie doesn't end there yeah god the, the the character playing god in that um the, the father father god pursues you yeah. in captivity yeah breaks down walls and like what a picture of for every man listening you'll never have the perfect day you'll you'll, you'll never live a perfect life that's why we follow jesus and we celebrate the redemption of what he does and the beauty of choice the beauty of choice to when you choose yeah the not the best yes get out of it like yeah. when when god comes to wrap his arms around you and rescue you from what you just were you chose receive his grace and mercy and get back out and it's not it was such a great picture to me because you're you're in captivity and it wasn't your good works that got you back out of it. Yeah, it was the father's love. Yeah, he came to rescue you. Yeah, and kind of disappointed that old man didn't walk off the cliff too. But <laughs> no. I'm kidding. Like, what Come on, what God, set down the violin, dude. Come help me. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> I'm drowning down here. <laughs> oh, but I love like in the whole the past film, right? My my character has to. We have these sweet, amazing Christian women playing the priestess roles. Mm -hmm. And I have to go to a really dark place, not because I want to lust after them, mm -hmm. because I have to show the temptation of these women and what they offer to my character. Yeah. Because I want men around the world to see this and say, that's real life. Yeah. Like you show up courageously to defend your family, yeah. but you're still a man that can be tempted with sin at any moment of the day. Yeah. And, and and that's what I appreciate. Like I, I think of the scene where you had that just kiss, and we have watching a film. The moment we're like, ah, oh, that's not real life, is the moment we disengage from the impactful yeah. emotional connection. Yeah. And that's me as an amateur actor in in the, this process. That's it's my goal as a communicator. If I get you at any point to think, oh, technically he's screwing up as a communicator. I've broken the emotional connection with what yeah. I'm trying to get you to hear. I had you, and I lost you. Yeah, yeah. because I told him, you know, whatever. I, yeah. I distracted the the story. So, um, yeah, I want you guys make it a priority to watch that film because it's it's the redemptive story coming through. And in in the hold the past film, I, I want to shift a little bit. You, you play a really. It was really fun for me to listen to our director and producer decide what your role was going to be mm. um, because they respect you as a really good actor. And mm. we, we knew the role of the army officer that you play, um, the, the main army officer of all, all these Philistine soldiers has to be like an antagonist against, you don't want to wait for the God of the past to show up. You just want to come kill me and you're mm. frustrated. And 
and they, they so they they're like there's nobody better to play this than justin wow. and yeah you know, so i see that process and wow. man it's, i mean it's really cool and talking with adrian how much he respects you and how he, thrilled he is that you're on this project um it's very humbling <laughs> it means a lot very to humbling. Uh, oh man it, it's um it means a lot to me because the lord put on my heart months ago uh, and we had it on, me, me and Cliff, as we were drawing everything out, we had it on our whiteboard right above, assemble the team. And we just learned to trust that God was going to put the right people in the right position for this. And then that would be the Avengers team of us as as the Lord builds out Gaborum mm. Studios. Mm. And, you know, we have big visions to do amazing roles. And we, we want high quality actors and department heads. And so for us to see you for me to get to know you this weekend too and, and sleep right next to you it's about three inches away <laughs> three inches away it's it starts out as like a foot foot and a half by morning it got cold okay. it got cold that's what cody says we're all yeah <laughs> yeah I, went, I roll over to like change because we're sleeping on on the concrete floor and like a four inch pad and like this side of my body is like i hate you so i'm like okay and i turn over and there's cody just right, <laughs> right there in my face. Right there. That beard. And I'm cold, which helps. The yeah. beard. I just put my fingers up in the beard. And it was your Valentine's beard. Day. <laughs> it was Valentine's Day. <laughs> your beard. And I just knew Valentine's Day. I just knew these dudes were married for like 10 years. I'm like, dude, I got a girlfriend. It's our first Valentine's Day. Uh, and yeah, Cliff and this guy. are like, oh, I'm married for 20 years. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're going to do Valentine's Day. Three inches next to the other guy on the yeah, floor. <laughs> yeah. We're just helping you with your purity, buddy. <laughs> Come on out here to San Antonio. God bless you. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. That's so true, though. <laughs> so you're welcome for that. Uh, <laughs> so, man, just really, uh, I appreciate your heart and your... Thanks, man. One of the things, right? Like, just... I, I told Felipe, me and Felipe, we were in Montana earlier this week, and th th there's few people in this... We're, we're sharing a hotel room, right? So we're sharing a hotel room, and I... There's few people, I told my wife, there's few people you can just hang out with that you are comfortable with and you can share a hotel room. Like that's a litmus test of like, do I really get along with somebody? Can we share a hotel room? Yeah. We save money, got a queen bed. I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> I'm kidding. That's a bro bond. That's a bro right bond. Oh, I did ask the lady when we checked in though. I was like, hey, do you have one, one king? <laughs> just to mess. And Felipe like panicked. <laughs> I was like, I'm just kidding. That's but, great. But, but seeing him and seeing the friendship and and... And, and that we're founded in the Lord and mm -hmm. and we're all committed to excellence and having fun. And I just appreciate that about your heart, yeah, man. You too, man. Uh, it's been a blast. I'm like, man, yeah, I can get along with this guy. He's a hoot. Yeah, thanks, bro. It's a, it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. Um, thank you. And a week from uh, today, we're going to be in Salt Lake and Dude, right I'm outside amped, of Salt man. Lake. And I'm amped. It's going to be a little bit colder, but okay. we're going to have a lot of it's fun. It's going to be a little bit colder. We're going to have some fun and... We're yeah. going to have some cool outfits on. So, you guys, the wardrobe some is amazing. If you don't follow... Leather bound. Oh, uh, our Instagram page is showing a lot of those right now. Um, our producers actually with the team with the wardrobes getting developed. But, yeah, the the, the wardrobes are incredible. My, my character's wardrobe You're just a is dude. all right. Yeah, I'm yeah. just a farmer, poor farmer. Well, I'm sleeping in mine because I'm method. <laughs> yeah, it's method. I want to smell like I'm mine. I'm going to go vigilante because I got to start just <laughs> killing people, you know, and I'll just go yeah. method. Yes. Oh. During this next week, just got to find some people to, you know. <laughs> just take out. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming at you. a bad guy. I had to go method. I had to go. So, bro, thank you for sitting on this podcast. Oh, dude, it's been a pleasure, man. And For everything. And just an, an encouragement, a last encouragement to, to guys, but, you know, I, I want to say this because, you know, the Heart of Man film and the reality of, um, you know, lust isn't bad. It, it sure. oh, man, Desire yeah. isn't bad. We yeah. all know this, right? We, I'm sure you guys will talk about this stuff. It's good to hear, man. Desire is not bad. And, um, dude, chicks are horny too, man. Yep. You yeah. know, yep. let's be Praise real. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. Because yeah. if they weren't, you know, that'd you wouldn't be, be having really kids anyway. And that would yeah. be why we have it and not them, you know. Um We've talked to women around the world too that that this message has been for them and and the reason why um, we use this this sexual brokenness storyline to tell the heart of man story is because that's usually where people experience the most shame and brokenness and hurt. Yeah. Right. And just like what you're saying with showing these priestesses or whatever, making it real, the furthest that we can go and meet people where they're at. Yeah, that's cool. Right. Wherever yeah. the the furthest, the darkest place we're gonna go. Yeah. We're bringing the light there. 
Amen. And if we'll go there, yeah, I love that. People will see it and they'll be like, "Dang, that's me." Yeah. And then when we show redemption come, then they know that there's a way out. Yeah. If we never go to the dark place, they're never going to know that there's hope. Yeah. So when you're got these priestesses and the people are like, "Oh, I know that that's feeling good. of being drawn when I'm making out with this woman at this in this waterfall, right? Who yeah. appears to be naked. She's not, but she yeah. you know, and people all the time are like, "Why'd you do this? I can't believe you do this." And because yeah. people need to know. They need to know. That God can meet them anywhere. Amen. You know, and you're in battle mode then, dude. You're not, you know, the Lord can help you. I'm not yeah. like, it's, first of all, the water's freezing, so that's helpful. <laughs> like when I'm at the waterfalls, the water is so <laughs> cold. It's very helpful when people standing around. Um, but, but it's battle mode, man. It's like we're doing this oh. to see redemption. Amen. And that's why we get to go to those dark places. And so women as well have told us, like, my life has been transformed because, like, I women carry more shame almost over this. Wow. Because we're told all the time, this is the guy's issue, right? Guys, this and that. Sure. Girls are like, no, dude, we have this too. And we feel more shame. More it's shame. It's supposed to be a guy's issue. More shame. But I've been addicted to porn for 12, for 12 years. Yep. You know, I've heard before. And so just know, man, that this is not a dude thing. This is a human thing. Yeah, and that's good. And just know there's hope because we, we're designed to long. They long to... Um, and just don't identify with the lie that like, because you desire that it's bad. No, we just got We just get this opportunity to remember Amen. that, that this doesn't bring us life. This is a really good part of life, but it doesn't bring us life. Really good part And of we life. get to remember what's the, what's the better yes. Help Amen. each other remember. What do we actually want? Yeah. I think the problem in the church and in Christianity isn't that we don't desire enough. It's that we don't know what we actually desire. Yeah. So we, instead of saying... Dude, we gotta we gotta put our desires on the altar, man. We gotta we gotta slay our desires and we gotta calm down. It's like, no, I want you to desire more. Tell me what you deeply desire. Because yeah. until we know what we deeply desire, until yeah. we dig into that and be like, what do I really? What does my soul want? We don't take time to do that. What do I long for in life? What does my soul want? When you know that, yeah, you can start eating those things, dude. Yeah, and going after those things. It's not we, that we don't desire enough. It's we don't know what we desire and yeah. desire more of it. Because oh. it's that better desire that drives us toward life. Yeah, you know? God, we need that. We need that reminder all the time. All the time. We need the reminder all the time. That's all I we love, have to do is, is meet and remi- remember. Reminds me of Psalm thirty-seven four that says, "Delight yourself in the Lord, and He'll give you the desires of your heart." Yeah. Right. It's it, it's amazing when you when you learn how to delight in the Lord. Yeah. And, yeah. and he gives you those desires. Yeah. And he knows those desires better than you do, right? So he'll draw yeah. those out of you. And he longs for you to live those out. And he yeah. knows those are better than the temptations of this yeah. world. And 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 that's where... He's it, making the best wine at the banquet for crying out loud. Yes, yeah. he knows it. Like He yeah. knows how to deliver. He's a God that knows yeah. how to deliver and show you when you choose the best. Yes, it is the thing that satisfies your soul. And dude, it's hard sometimes. So like give grace... Give to grace. yourself and to the person next to you, yeah, whether amen. it's your spouse or your friend, give, to give grace. grace, man, because dude, it because you can forget in those moments, and it's a process yep. of learning, dude. It's just like I, I'm a pretty happy guy, but dude, somebody gets in front of me, and I'm in the fast lane all the time. You get a slow <laughs> person in there, dear Lord Jesus, man, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's a process, right? Yeah, it's a process of giving ourselves grace. To Amen. where we have to learn, you know, and, we, and if we like immediately take shame and stuff like that, like, dude, we're not going to learn because we're not listening to what actually happened. Amen. Dude, God is so gracious to us. He's not saying, why'd you do that? What's wrong with you? Don't, yeah. don't do that. Yeah. He's saying, dude, I, I, and I know we're getting low on time here, so I'll just wrap this up, um, my part of it anyway. I remember it, having gone through a really bad breakup a couple years ago, and I, my soul just felt grieved. Hmm. And, and the, I was... Like my, my quiet place was like, I'm just in a hot shower, just sitting on the floor, man, just Whoa. like letting it hit me and just chilling. And I felt Holy Spirit say, what's bothering you? Wow. Just that. What's bothering you? And I put language to it for the first time. And I felt him like whisper to me, they call me wonderful counselor for a reason. Dang. You know, and this That's is so powerful, dude. So oh, powerful. It gives me and, but it's so simple, right? It, it it felt like this such simple and easy moment. Wow. It's like Dang. it's like when you when you meet up with your best friend again for the first time in a while. You know, it's just easy. Yeah, it's easy. And it was just a simple thing of like so. In our process of like learning, yeah. the Lord knows that there's something inside of us that's longing for more. 
Yeah. It's longing for something deeper. He knows that we want life. Amen. He made us to want life. Yeah. And he knows we're just trying to figure out where to get it from. Wow. And he's so gracious to say, and I love that this point in the Heart of Man film where Tony Anderson is describing this vision that he had where he had repeated his, his addiction over and over and over again, even mm -hmm. after preaching to other people. You shouldn't do this. Look what God's doing in the world. And Jesus is great, so stop looking at pornos. And he fell again. Mm. And he had this vision of Jesus being with him in this prison. So powerful. Addiction. Oh. And, he, and I love my favorite part of the movie, one of the, my probably top three favorite parts. The Lord says to him, you know, I, yeah. he, he, oh, he said about the Lord, he said, the Lord wasn't sitting there telling me I shouldn't do this or that. He just sat with me yeah. and he loved me. And that's what a good friend would do. That's what oh. a good parent would do. That's what God does. We don't, we don't see God that way often enough. So give yeah. ourselves the space oh. to sit with God in our brokenness and weakness and say, Amen. And let him smile at you and look at you and say, what's going on? Oh. And at the end of that vision, or when he shares that, I love, because that was one of the most powerful things to me. Yeah. He says, you can, you can get up and leave anytime you want. Yeah. Oh, come yeah. on, right? Like yeah. he's going to sit I'll sit with here you. with you if you want to. Yeah. But also if you want to leave, you can leave anytime. Whoa. And you're just like, wait, wait a minute. I have choice. And if I stay here, you're still going to love gonna me love and me. be kind. Oh. And if I go out, you're gonna, your demeanor to me is not going to change at all. Wow. And that is something that I think a lot of us are missing out on. Even if we hear it at a conference or on a podcast, it's... we miss out on it in our everyday lives. Yep. So we get to. Not we that did. it's time to start doing this. We get to, our invitation is to sit with our Father who's a counselor, who's, who's happy with who we are and smiling at us. Yeah. And let Him lead us into deeper life. Wow. You know? Justin, that has enriched my soul so much, bro. <laughs> Dude, thank me you. too, right? Yeah. And so let's remind each other. Yeah, that's and good. Thank you Amen. for saying it, but let's remind yeah. each other of like, yeah. and give each Amen. other grace. Give grace. Yeah. And that's, wow, man. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And yeah. Um, guys, Super I fun. hope as you listen to this, it blessed your soul as much as it did ours. Um, thank you for listening to this podcast, following the journey of Hold the Pass. I want to encourage each one of you, if you haven't joined the Gaborum yet, you've, you've heard us talk what that is. I want you to commit to join the Gaborum. You could get inside looks into this, but most importantly, know when your head hits the pillow every night, I, I have a philosophy me and Cliff talk about that you should earn the right to hit your pillow with honor by the way you acted every day, but by, by the grace you operated in, but as a man valiantly with courage and you should earn that right to hit your pillow exhausted and, and proud of what you've done. And if it's what you ultimately want, it's what you want. It's, it's what, what your you body want. longs for. It's what your soul longs for. It's what you, it, yeah. yeah. It's the better. Yes. It's the better. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's, it's, you hit that point. But you know every night when that happens that you're helping be a part of changing the history of film with us. Um, so I want to encourage you guys to commit to join the Gaborum. If this blessed your soul, do me a favor, share this podcast with a couple guys. Um, I know I'm going to bless my soul. And we will talk to you on the next podcast. So for now, Justin, thank you again, bro. Thanks, man. Yeah. And indeed, you're doing a great job. Thank Love you. your dedication. This guy's killing it. So thank you, you guys bro. should be super amped. Oh. He's going all in, man. And uh, that's what makes something great. So thank, thank you. you, bro. It's going to be you. awesome. It means the world. See you guys.